Officially, welcome everyone. Um, for those of you that know me and don't, my name is Jen Brown. I am the lead trainer and curriculum designer for Renew US. I am super excited that you are here for our very first actual public training because we have been running an amazing campaign manager cohort for the last, I think, seven weeks. I know some of our cohort members are here. And we are really excited to partner with both Evan and Harry, and I will let them introduce themselves for the first of our trainings. I'll drop the link in the chat for upcoming trainings. Uh, definitely expect January to get super busy. I am all about as much continuing education as possible because in order for us to really build this movement and keep in the words of Spencer Reed, go fight winning, we are going to need to feel as ready as possible. And I want to just emphasize y'all already have the skills we need to make this happen. I just know that imposter syndrome and all of that goodness that comes in is sometimes better served when you're like, hey, there's other people doing this and I am not alone. Um, that being said, I am going to turn it over to Evan and Harry. If you are a person that knows someone first that might be interested in our upcoming cohort, we are currently taking applications for the campaign manager cohort. Here is a one page document that will tell you all about the upcoming cohort. It starts officially February 1st and we get to do this kind of cool stuff three days a week or for the Saturday soldiers all day on Saturday, where you're learning, you're vibing, you're getting to know other people that are interested in this movement work and then leaving with a really amazing network. That's enough of me. I will turn it over to Evan and Harry and I am their tech support. So if y'all have any problems logging into your PDI or getting access to it, please drop that in the chat so I can make sure to solve that problem. Take it away, guys. Awesome. Thank you, Jen. So good to be here. Um, so I'm Evan. Uh, as those of you who are in the campaign manager training um, right now know, uh, I am a data professional, um, but I come out of organizing. So yeah, I, I, um, a little bit about me. You see him pronouns. I'm based in Iowa, and uh, I'm a partner at Hegemony Strategies with Harry and our partner, Steph Munson. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I, I do data now, but I came out of organizing. I, I started in community and electoral organizing, and then I saw how um, powerful good data practices are and how they can supercharge organizing. And so now that's the space I'm in, sharing knowledge about how these tools can can help, help uh, organizers. I'll kick it over to Harry. Cool, hi, hey, thanks, Evan. Um, my name's Harry Baker, he, him. Um, I am based out of Maryland, so a little bit closer to <laughs> Rhode Island. Um, but yeah, I, I grew up on the East Coast and um, you know, I ended up getting involved in politics in my last year of college. I was going to school in Iowa during the 2016 primary, um, ended up becoming a volunteer for the Bernie Sanders campaign. Um, and, um, you know, I, I come out of a background of like tech and computer science, but, um, you know, I enjoyed politics so much that I, I tried to figure out a way to kind of do that. Um, so I, I worked at the Texas Democratic Party afterwards. I, I've since then worked at a variety of different campaigns, normally working on um, data and technology. Um, though I have also some experience with grassroots organizing through the local DSA and um, the DC, Maryland area. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I met Evan um, on the 2020 Bernie campaign. I was the Iowa data director there. And since then, I've been doing um, freelance consulting and trainings like the one we're about to do here. And uh, specifically, I the last few months, I've been working on a program based out of California, which uses Blue Vote, uh, also known as PDI. Um, so I am, you know, I, I've been forced to learn how to use it, and I will be going over a lot of its you know, quirks and nuances that aren't super intuitive or obvious, especially if you're more used to some of the like workflows of van. So I'm, I'm happy that we've gone through, you know, the, the van trainings because I will probably reference a lot of how van works to kind of explain how PDI works differently. Um, just because that's kind of how I, you know, learned these systems. Um, and I, I'm much more familiar with van, um, I will say, but, um, I like it a lot more too, but we won't, <laughs> we won't really go into that part. But um, you know, PDI it, it does everything that it needs to do. Evan, Evan's going to kind of go into more depth about like the platform specifically, but it, you know, it is a CRM to run campaign, so it is a, a very useful tool if you need something to organize voters, and voter outreach. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Well, you you transitioned perfectly. 
um, to the next section, which is uh, kind of give an overview of what we're going to talk about over the next two hours or hour and 50 minutes here. Um, and uh, yeah, so first off, I'm going to start off with just, you know, where we're going to start off with what is PDI. Um, and then we're going to go into some skills training. Uh, we're going to go through some of the basics of looking people up, creating a list of people in PDI, tracking different, different ways to track data in, in the system. Uh, and then we're going to do a big chunk on phone banking, um, how to use PDI or Blue Boat to uh, phone bank voters or people. Um, and then we'll do a big chunk on doors, how to knock doors with the tool as well. Um, and we will be taking questions throughout. So like um, at the end of each section, um, I'll, we'll pause, take Q&A. So uh, as questions come up, put them in the chat and then I'll kind of catch up uh, on them at the end of that section. Um, and then we'll have, you know, hopefully have a few minutes at the very end for any big picture questions that, that come up as well. But I definitely want to make this interactive and, um, and, and, you know, we're here to answer, answer any, any questions that come up. So uh, with that, I'm going to start sharing my screen for the what is PDI. All right, here we are, as you can see, what is PDI, as promised. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so what is it? Okay, so just like BAN, PDI has like basically three parts. Uh, it starts with the voter file. Um, so PDI is a data company. Uh, they purchase the voter file from each um, state's secretary of state or whichever authority keeps a list of who's registered to vote in that state. Um, so uh, PDI, Political Data Incorporated, is what it stands for, purchases the voter file for a given state. They add in some supplemental data, so modeled race and ethnicity. Um, you know, they, they add in, you know, some modeled data like that, maybe some additional phone numbers in, in some states for, for those people. Um, and then they have this database, which is the voter file plus the supplemental data. Um, but then, What's, what's even more important is that they also have built an interface to interact with that data. So you don't have to know how to write SQL queries <laughs> um, to uh, interact with the database. There's a, there's a visual interface that you can use to, to create lists and, and search for people and, and knock doors and, and phone banks. So, um, so those are really the three big parts, the voter file, that supplemental data, and then an interface to use that data. And for those of you who have gone through the VAN training, You'll remember this is also these are also the three component parts of VAN. So both VAN and PDI are what are known as CRMs, um, uh, customer relationship management software, um, and uh, in, in the voter space. So it's 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 this idea of um, you know uh, relatively user friendly <laughs> interface paired with a database that um, that both of these these two products are, are, are trying to, to build and as you'll see they're very similar in some ways um, both uh, both PDI and um, and van so you've already heard us use this term PDI and we've also heard us use this term blue vote uh, so the, the the relationship between these two terms is is a little bit co not complicated but just to clarify the relationship so PDI political data incorporated is the company that produces this tool called PDI um, and in California. So in California, this is actually the dominant electoral CRM. PDI is the tool that everyone uses in, um, in California. It, it, in every other state, it's VAN. VAN is the dominant tool. That's what the, kind of the default is. In California though, PDI has, a better, better, um, has better data than VAN does and people are used to the PDI interface. And so that's the, that's the default. Um, recently, PDI, the um, uh, company, is trying to expand nationally uh, and, and challenge VAN in other states as well. And so they've started offering their interface. They, so they <clears throat> they bought the data, the voter file in other states, and they're pairing that with their interface, the, the PDI interface, for each state, like Rhode Island or uh, North Carolina, and um, and they're branding it as Blue Boat. Uh, so, so if you hear Blue Boat, it just means PDI, you know, in a state other than California. And if, you know, you hear PDI, that just means Blue Boat in either in the company. And the confusing part is that the company itself does not use these terms rigorously. 
So <laughs> even if you have a blue vote account, like you're not in California, you, you sign up with for a blue vote account, sometimes in the interface, it'll say PDI instead of blue vote. So anyway, you can use them interchangeably. We'll use both throughout. Um, but technically speaking, probably what, what most of you are going to be using is, is technically blue vote because you're not in California. Um, so, okay. So the, you know, other place I want to start is, well, you know, kind of a comparison of these two tools, uh, blue vote and, and van. Um, and I'll actually start with van, um, because again, those of you who have gone through the van training, um, you know, it is, it is the default. Van is by far and away the most commonly used uh, voter CRM in the country. Um, and so in most cases, you know, you're, you're thinking, okay, well, I'm going to use Van unless there's a reason not to. And that's when you start to think about blue vote. So why would that come up? Okay, so Van um, requires you to interact with, if you're, if you're trying to get Van as a um, electoral campaign, it required, you are required to interact with the state Democratic Party. And this is because of the contract that um, NGP Van Every Action has negotiated with the DNC. Um, so the uh, default, you know, the standard way to get Van access for an electoral campaign is you reach out to your state Democratic Party, you say, hey, we'd like to buy Van access. The state, the state party says, okay, here's the price, here's a contract, you sign the contract, you get access to Vote Builder, that version of Van. And, um, but in some cases, the state party will refuse to sell uh, Van to you, to a, to a campaign rather. Um, and in some cases, that's because you're running a primary campaign against um, the, against an incumbent Democrat. And some state parties have a policy that they don't sell van to primary challengers. Um, in some cases, it might be because the party just doesn't like you. <laughs> um, or, uh, yeah, or maybe the price is so high that you can't afford it, right? So, um, so then you do have the option to go to this company called Target Smart, which is a, a data company that sells van independently of the state party, of the, of the Democratic Party. Um, but Target Smart will only sell you van if you've been turned down by the state party. Um, so even if you're, if even if you end up buying van through Target Smart, you still have to go through the step of asking the Democratic Party for vote builder access um, in order for Target Smart to sell you van. Which is, uh, which is, it just goes to show if you're trying to get van as a as a political campaign. You ha it has to go through the state party, and that's a big deal breaker because the state party can say, uh, we don't like you, and you're running a primary <laughs> challenge, <laughs> to Jenna's point. Um, and, you know, to put an even finer point on it, you know, just to kind of play to the audience here, um, Van is also not friendly to political cooperatives. So um, this this political co-op model is direct a direct challenge, really, to the um, the way that Vote Builder wants to, or sorry, the way that Van and the state Democratic parties want to interact with campaigns. Um, and so, you know, whether you end up buying Van from the state party or from Target Smart, in either case, it's going to be really hard to buy it as a collection of candidates rather than as an individual candidate. They really want to um, negotiate with individual campaigns rather than do any sort of collective negotiation with. An entity that's going to resell it. Um, so, you know, that's the big, you know, downside of Van in this comparison. The um, one of the the positives of Van is that Van does have a long term commitment to all 50 states. And what I mean by this is that they they do regular voter data updates. So Van has a, a process where they they have voter file updates. You know whether it's a monthly basis or you know, every two months or something, they're they're regularly updating the voter file, and um, they're also the industry standard. So uh, again, you know, by far and away, Van is the most common CRM for um, for uh, electoral work, and what that means is that there are a lot of people out there who have at least a passing knowledge of Van. Um, you know, if you if you worked in uh, field organizing anywhere in the country, except for California, you've used Van, 
and uh, people have like an understanding of what it can do and, and how it works. Um, and it, uh, being the industry standard also means that other tools are built to work with Than. So like if you're talking about like a texting tool, peer to peer texting tool, um, they are, you know, most of their clients are going to be using Van as their CRM. And so uh, that texting tool is going to be built to integrate with Van rather than another tool. Um, and basically, you know, any tool that's out there, they're going to have some sort of way where it's like, here's how we here's how we relate to Van. So those are the, those are the benefits of Van. Um, you know, this long-term commitment to all 50 states and the, being the industry standard. So how does that compare with Luvo slash PDI? The biggest pro, of course, is that you can purchase access to Blue Vote without talking to your state Democratic Party. You never have to, you never have to talk to your state party. Um, and PDI, the company, is much more open to setting up licensing agreements for a, a, a co-op style arrangement where there's an entity that's purchasing um, access to the tool that they're gonna share or resell with, with um, individual campaigns. So that's the big, big pro is that, you know, uh, you don't have to go through the state party and you could do a co-op type license model. The cons are that Bluevo is new to most states. So they, uh, PDI has just recently, like within the last cycle, started offering um, this tool in all 50 states. And, you know, just from like, my, in my experience, they might not have all of the voter data that, um, that Van has. So for instance, Van might have vote history going back to 1996 for everyone <laughs> on the voter file. And PDI might only have it for the, you know, big general elections. They might not have the off years or the municipals or your local races. Um, so that's definitely something if you're, if you're looking into blue vote and PDI, you should, you should evaluate, okay, what, what data do you have for my state specifically? And can I take a look and make sure it's all there? Um, and it's all, I'm also, in some cases, this isn't always the case, but, um, the frequency of updating voter data might be slower because if you're the only client that PDI has in a given state, um, you know, you're a lower priority than, than states that have a lot of clients. And whereas with Van, they're always doing voter file updates in all 50 states because they have they have clients in all 50 states. Um, so that's another thing. If you are talking to Blue Boat, you should, you should ask what's your upload frequency. And then finally, instead of being the industry standard, they're trying to disrupt, you know, this, this CRM space. <laughs> they're trying to come in here and topple the king, which is Van. And that comes with a couple of things. You know, first off, fewer people understand how to use PDI. So if you um, if you're running a campaign and you decide to use P PDI and Blue Vote as your um, as your main CRM, you're going to have to teach people how to use it, <laughs> unless you're in California, because odds are the you know any field organizers or volunteers that are part of your campaign are not going to know how to use this tool for the time being. That could change. Um, and then finally, you know, since they're trying to disrupt the space and they're this up and coming new tool, there are very few integrations available with, with other contact tools. So again, to use texting as an example, PDI offers a peer to peer texting tool that they own called Outreach Circle, um, which does have an integration with PDI. The only other texting tool that offers an integration with PDI, to my knowledge, is through text. So like your hustle and your spoke do not offer integrations with PDI, whereas of course they do have band integrations. So you're probably gonna be doing a lot of bulk up or a lot of uh, data transfers, um, manual data transfers, because these integrations just haven't been built because it's not a big enough player for, for other vendors to, to bother building an integration for it. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit, so that's what, what PDI is, that's what Blue Vote is, and that's a, a, a short comparison chart between that tool and, and Van. Um, I'm going to pause for questions here. Yeah, is it, um, yeah, any, anything so far? Any questions so far? Cool. Awesome. Um, so, with that, I'm going to start. I'm gonna, you know, uh, start screen sharing the tool. Um, give me one second. 
All right, here we are. Okay, so the um, the way to access PDI is to go to onlinecampaigntools.com, <laughs> which is, uh, I think it's a hilariously generic name, <laughs> um, but that's, that's, uh, that's the URL that you go to. And it gives you this, this sign-in form, um, which is pretty straightforward. You just put in your uh, email and password. You know, this is assuming that you have a user account. You do have to check the box uh, agreeing to the user agreement every single time you log in. Um, and you click sign in. And it brings you to the home page of PDI. Um, so I'll walk through a couple of the elements here. Um, or actually, let me let me pause for just a second. Did anyone have any had has anyone had any problems with with setting up their user account? Well, it went fine for me. Awesome. Thumbs up. Cool. Okay. Cool. Um. Oh, and then uh, Jen is adding you if you registered just recently. So, um. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, when you log in, you know, for one thing to look at, I'll just walk walk through these different elements here. So so first off, up in the top left, you know, we have the Renew US, or we have the um, the PDI logo here, and then uh, the name of the um, account you're in. So I'm in the Renew US account. So if you have access to multiple PDI accounts, that's how you tell which one you're in at any given time. Um, there's these uh, drop down menus across the top, which is where we'll spend most of our time. Uh, that's how you navigate for the most part around, um, around PDI. Uh, there's a search box that you can also use to navigate to the different tools. There's these three lines which allow you to you know, manage your account um, or sign out or access the help center. The help center does have a ton of videos uh, for how to watch or how, how to do different things. So they have, um, yeah, it's a, it's a great resource to check out. Um, and in fact, that's one place uh, that I think PDI actually uh, does better than Van is that they, they do have at least some documentation available. Um, okay, what else? So now down in the, the center here, there are all these different um, charts and graphs. Um, so, uh oh, question? No, okay. Um, so there's, uh, yeah, there's this event list, there's, um, these buttons across the top for different tools and, you know, there's support statistics, so on and so forth. Um, this is all customizable. You can change what, um, links are displayed across the top and what kind of widgets are at the bottom here using the, uh, gear, um, right here. Uh, and yeah, and then these, these buttons, these quick links are just links to commonly used tools that can also be accessed with the drop down menu. Um, Harry, anything else I should add about the home page here? Uh, no, I, I think you basically covered all the top lines. Cool. Okay, so let's. Uh, so that's kind of an orientation of grounding. Um, in, you know, once you're in. So let's start to do something in here. Uh, so the most basic thing, you know, in any CRM is like, I want to find a person. I want to find one person, a specific person. Um, how do I do that? Uh, so in PDI, the way you do that is with this individual people search feature um, or people lookup feature here too. Um, so if you go to actions and you, uh, the actions drop down, individual people search is the first option. Or if you have it as a quick link, you can click it there. Um, and when you click that link, it brings you to this interface. Um, so that, you know, to start, it just offers, it just allows you to search on first name and last name. But if you click show additional search option, you can search on a lot of other fields like address, party, birthday, email address, all these that are listed here. Um, and I'll come back to that actually. So let's, uh, let's see if there's an Evan Berger in here. Nope, no Evan Berger. Let's see if uh, this is the actual Rhode Island data file. So there must not be an Evan Berger in, uh, in the state of Ro registered to vote in the state of Rhode Island. But there is an Elizabeth Berger in Woonsocket. Um, 
So here we are. In, oh yeah. So so the search returned this one person. I could click on Elizabeth's uh, name, and it brings up her record. Um, you know, with your address, phone number. You can click these different tabs to see if there's any volunteer info or uh, the voter info is the voter file stuff. So one thing about um, PDI is that it does have it has built-in volunteer management tools and donor management tools. As you can see, there's this donor info option, this volunteer info option, um, but it's not uh, segregated or split up in the same way that Van does. So on Van, you've got your My Voters database and you've got your My Campaign database, and the two are separate. They relate to each other, but they're two separate databases. With PDI, all of that it's not separated in the same way. It's, it's all kind of mixed together here where like you're looking at someone's record and you've got a voter info tab and you've got a donor info tab all, all together, which in a way is nice um, to have it all side by side. But, um, you know, uh, it's, it's just a different structure. So uh, here's all the voter file info. You can see that, um, wow. Uh, this person is a very regular voter. Uh, so they have um, voter info going back to 2000, which honestly is like all you really need. Um, and uh, yeah, the districts, you know, voter reg fields, um, so on and so forth. Uh, other voters in household. Um, so that's the that, that's what a record looks like. Going back to the individual people search. Let's find uh, Elizabeth again. So if you want to, um, instead of clicking the, her name to get into a record, you can also click edit grid fields and you can select other information to display. Oops, I click cancel, save. Um, display on this like results page. So now we can see primary phone, email, precinct, party, and then these actions buttons um, and flags. So, um, yeah, so if you if you wanted to look for all the people with the last name of Berger, then it will display all of the uh, um, all of that information kind of on the same page. You can still obviously click on the each person's name and, and get into their their record. So um, that is individual people search. Um, two other things. Uh, so there's this search data filter up here as well. Right now it's on voters only, which means we're looking for anyone who is a registered voter. You can also change that filter to look only at my people, which is like the volunteer management um, data, you know, data. You can look at voters and people. You can look at only your volunteers and only your donors. So again, in the same way that, um, you know, just this, this just kind of reiterates that whereas Van has a very clear distinction between my campaign and my voters, in PDI, it really is kind of all mixed together where like on the same page, you could you could use the same page to search your volunteers and, or voters. Um, and all you have to do is change this filter. Um, and then again, on the people database thing, that's what this copy individuals below to people database. That means you're taking these voters and you're marking them as your like my campaign, essentially, your, 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 your volunteer database. Um, so if you wanted to mark all of these, um, 21 people, if you want to add them all to people, then you just copy individuals below to people database. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's you know, the, the lookup tool, the people search tool. Um, yeah, I think Hannah says it seems more user friendly. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's totally personal preference. Um, some people love it, some people, some people love uh, Van, so. Um, so yeah, I'm going to hand things over to Harry for the next step, and then we'll take questions about um, both topics uh, after that. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Evan. I think, you, yep, you're going to have to stop the screen share because I'm going to take that over. Um, okay, does everybody see the screen share correctly? Yep. Okay, awesome. Um, let me move the floating heads out of the way. Um, so yeah, thank you for showing all that stuff, Evan. Um, I am going to be spending um, about the next 15 minutes going over how universes are saved, accessed, and created in 
um, blue vote. Um, and this is probably where uh, it, the differences between um, blue vote and NGP van start to become more apparent. Um, primarily because this is something that you're going to be spending a lot of time doing, probably, um, depending on your role in a campaign. Um, but in it's also an example of um, where I think PDI is a little bit less user friendly than van. Um, so to dive in, um, the way that you basically do all of your interaction with universes is through um, the actions tab up at the top here and then create universes. This, you know, is could be better named because you don't exclusively create universes here. This is also where you access and look at your previously created and saved universes. So, um, you know, that's a little bit misleading. There's no like um, folder, like web directory where all of your saved universes are the way that it exists in van. Um, but if you ever want to both create your universes and then go and look at the ones you've already made, you, you still have to go to that create universes button. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, and you know, it'll be something you, you, um, get used to, but when I, I know when I was getting started, it, uh, kind of threw me a little bit. Um, so it drops you here into the, um, first page of the, um, you know, different parameters that you have and can use to create universes. Um, and so there's a lot of different options here, and you can see here over on the right, there is the saved universes um, tab here. Um, though again, it, it like a little annoyingly, it's kind of formatted and, and like uh, the visualization, it, like it looks basically the same as these kind of, um, you know, search parameter tabs. So again, just keep in mind that if you want to go and access something you've already created, or if you want to like edit or make a new universe off of something you've already built, or just go back to double check what actually was used to create a universe, you would want to go here to save the universes. And um, you can see here, we have a couple of examples here, but um, we're going to get to that in just a second. Um, so again, another thing, another way that the PDI uh, blue vote is different than van is that, um, like I said, there are different pages for the different types of parameters that you'll use to create universes. Um, it's not like van where everything is effectively on the same page that you just scroll down through and like click the um, drop box things to open up um, and expand what like the specific things that you're going to be working with are. So, um, you know, you can, these are the kind of like the most important, um, most common um, and, you know, typically most important things that you will create universes out of. You, you can see here, there is the, um, you know, pre-existing universes, um, but also things like voter IDs, um, you know, like support flags, how much you, you support a candidate, um, party registration, age range, gender, um, and ethnicity and language. Um, and so, you know, again, depending on the state that you're working in, um, these may or may not be accessible data fields. You know, some states don't, um, track party registration by way of the, you know, Secretary of State. So if you're in a state that has that, you know, you can use like, is are they a Dem or an independent or Republican? Um, but you might not be able to have that data point to work off of. And, and that's just something that's going to be, you know, that's true within VAN as well. So um, that's just something to you know, keep in mind, especially if you move to a different state than one that you're kind of more experienced in. Um, but yeah, I mean, basically the logic of how universes are created um, works very similarly to Van. Um, and here I'm going to like just go through some of these other data fields here. You can see vote history. Um, you know, they, they have a good amount here. Oops. Um, demographics. This just goes into a little bit more depth um, compared to those ones that we saw on the sam simple target fields. Um, so you can see here, there's like a little bit more information on like residential information, whether they're a homeowner, um, if they have a PO box, if they have like a cell phone or whatever. Um, and then other things like if they've volunteered or, um, you know, are, are married. And again, like it, um, you'll probably have to like experiment around to see which of these actually has like relevant data or existing data behind it. Um, if it's like relevant to the targeting that you're going to want to do. Um, and yeah, basically all these other things are, are um, pretty, you know, 
exactly familiar or, or similar to how it works in van. So like geography, you can look up um, specific precincts if you want to narrow in on like a school board district or a city. Um, there's a bunch of other um, like options here, like rank precincts. I haven't really used this too much, but um, list of districts for geography is one of the ones I've um, used most often. Um, so you can see county, congressional district, um, precinct, um, and ooh, zip code they seem to have added. Um, and then from here, my flags, that's again, um, this is kind of like the thing that's more, um, this is basically the same as like a survey question and survey responses in van. Um, and so you'll see here that we have those like most common, um, you know, one through five field ID question, but you can also, um, depending on the amount of survey questions that have been created, you can open up this drop down and, and find um, different survey questions here. So um, actually, no, sorry. Support IDs, I, again, this is like a little bit of a um, slightly confusing thing, but the first tab here is just exclusively that like default one through five um, support ID question. Um, if you want to integrate the, you know, more granular survey questions or ones that you've, you've created, um, whatever they may be, you would find that under my flag data. And um, again, you know, in a real campaign, you'll see a lot more stuff here. But, you know, if, if uh, an example of a survey question would be like, what um, policies is the voter most like, uh, you know, interested in? And so like environmentalism, um, labor rights, healthcare, reproductive healthcare, things like that. Um, this is where you would um, use those to create universes and, and create lists for voter outreach. Um, and then again, you know, models, this is like getting into more advanced territory, but if you're working with models, this is where it would be found. Um, so kind of just to go back to the sample target page, I, um, those are like all the different search parameters that you can use. And then um, I wanted to cover um, how these numbers are displayed in the process of creating a list. And um, this is actually something that I think it does a little bit better than Van because you'll see here that it does give you the top line summary of how many people are included in your list based on the criteria that you've added. Um, and so in Van, you have to like remember to click refresh counts to be able to get the actual up-to-date number of how many people would be included in the universe. Um, this in, in um, blue vote, it does it automatically. So we're going to, let's start with geography because that's gonna probably have something. Um, city and then city of uh, Central Falls. So the first step, um, you have to then, you know, add to criteria because this is the first step, uh, very similar to how it exists in Van. Um, once you click that, it'll process those counts um, and, and you know tabulate how many people are included. Um, and it doesn't seem like there's anybody here. Um, so this, uh, I guess, Evan, do you know, um, do we have data in the sandbox account here? Like would any of these actually show up with counts? Well, there's, there's definitely data. I don't know which districts are, are um, active, but like if you go to, if you go to, um, demographics like or sorry simple target fields can you just like look for dems like oh uh, yeah good um okay so we are going to then add it here um and you'll see in just a second the logic well doesn't seem like there's any dems either no, uh, no, I oh, oh i did intersect there we go okay um <laughs> Sorry. So I am now, all right, I gotta, the downside of it um, automatically giving you those counts is that it like refreshes anytime you change anything, which is a little kind of annoying. There we go. Okay. Um, so all Dems, um, you'll see here um, what the totals are for whatever like your PDI committee is. Um, and so um, don't make the mistake I did. Um, the logic to either expand or reduce the universe you have works again like pretty much exactly the same as van um there's a little bit of a difference but like the core logic is the same that you can either do and steps in that like the voters are like both criteria that you ask for or you can do an or step that it's like either one um 
so if I were to do um, a Dems, but also people who are older than 45, if I were to do an and criteria, that's the intersection of the Venn diagram, um, this is everybody who is both a Democrat and also over 45. Um, if I were to instead do or, um, it would be like expanding that initial pool because it's either anybody who is a Democrat or is over, um, you know, 45. And you can see here, it has both the like total top lines of how many people are included as well as the amount of people within each step. Um, this is, you know, Van doesn't do this even with the preview counts feature. So this is kind of a um, nice way to be able to troubleshoot um, and then hone in on what specific universes that you're trying to create. Um, because, you know, if, if the counts are like wildly off, it's like, you know, a zero or a, um, you know, half a million, if you're trying to do something much more selective, you can pretty easily go in and see where you might have gone wrong with your logic. Um, and so then the last one here, it's um, an exclude criteria. This is, would be the same as like a remove step. And so let's say I want to remove anybody who is a Republican. Um, so this would um, hopefully reduce the list. There we go. Um, and you can see here then um, it's a little bit more than just the Democrats. And so what this does is that it takes all Democrats adds everybody over a certain age and then takes out all of the Republicans, um, you know, effectively leaving you with all Democrats and then all independents who are over 45. Um, and so, you know, it's a little bit different than how Van works. There's not a um, narrow like filter step, but you can effectively, um, you know, create all of the same kinds of universes using the and, and or remove um, steps that it offers here. And then once you, um, you know, have this summary, you can go in and make, you know, edits here. Um, you don't have to like delete it and like re-add everything um, just to save time. But, um, and, you know, and if you ever want to like, just need to refresh the counts, um, it, it normally does it automatically, but it, that's button offers it here. Um, and so, um, you know, once you were finished with that, you would click on save. First, we're going to do um, some cross tabs here. Um, I am not as familiar with this stuff, but um, if you want to just do some like, you know, rough analysis of um, the party and age breakdown of what this universe is, just to make sure that it's in line with, um, you know, who you're um, trying to do outreach to. Or maybe you're just trying to create a universe to do reporting off of rather than doing a universe for voter outreach. Um, that's probably a better example of when you would run these cross tabs because, um, you know, again, similar to Van, everything runs through universes for the most part. If you want to do more kind of granular in depth analyses, you create a universe to run the analysis on, um, very similar to how you do um, counts and cross tabs based on the universe within Van. I, I don't know if you guys covered that in the previous section, but. Um, that is, I did, but yeah, not everyone went through that training. So, <laughs> um, so one of the other things that um, PDI sometimes struggles with is loading time, um, as we can see now. So I am going to give this just another minute. Okay, there we go. It finished. Um, and you can see here it spit out a um, basic kind of counts and cross tab, like a similar to a pivot table in you know, Excel or Sheets. Um, this gives you the like specific count breakdown um, by each combination of these fields. So right now this is breaking down party and age to tell you, okay, how many, you know, Democrats 18 to 4, 24 are there, Democrats 25 to 34, et cetera, et cetera. And then these like non-Democrats, um, whatever that reflects um, with the same breakdown. And you can see here, there is, um, there's nobody um, under 45 here because we only told it to include Democrats if they're younger than um, 45. Um, so um, that is the um, kind of main things that you need to know to create universes. The last step here is you're going to save it. And I'm going to do Harry test. Um, now, one, one thing um, to keep in mind is that you're probably going to want to just save this without clicking one of these. Um, I'm not 100% sure what 
um, the targeting does, but um, saving a static list, it does work the same way in Van as a st static saved list rather than a saved search. Um, it doesn't, PD, uh, Blue Vote doesn't like have the same naming convention. It doesn't specify that um, saving regularly is a saved search rather than a saved list. But if you save this universe, it Func it works the same way and that you are saving these search parameters rather than that snapshot of uh, 460,000 people that were included in the first time that you created the universe. Um, and so what this means is that anytime that you um, pull up this universe or load this universe into the canvassing app, um, anybody who's newly you know, registered as a Democrat or ages into that um, range that you included would then be included in your universe. Um, and so here, you know, once you create and you save your universe, it gives you, you know, just a couple of like um, quick links to different things that you might use your universe for um, creating lists and files, doing more in depth counts, um, canvassing and phone banking. Um, we are not, we, we're going to get to these things later on in the training, but I um, first wanted to cover how um, universes are saved into folders. Um, and so this is, again, another thing that, um, another way that it's different from Van, like I mentioned before, there's not really a graphical user interface to reflect folders the way it exists in Van, you know, where you click on folders, and then it lists all of your folders, and you can click into them and see what universes are saved in them. Um, folders do exist, but it, it's more of like a organizational, like internal thing that organize based on using this dropdown. Um, the default is to just list all universes that you have, and then you can narrow down. So um, I'm just going to create a quick um, Democrat universe just to um, show you how to save into a new folder. Um, it's basically the same way. You just um, click add new folder here um, and click that here. Harry Dems save. Um, and so you're going to see here, I go back to saved universes. Um, it defaults to all like universes that are, um, you know, that your profile has access to. And then you would filter based on this drop down here. So it, again, it like you can use folders to organize your data and more easily um, and, you know, cleanly find what you're looking for. But it, it's just a little bit of an extra step compared to Van. Um, and that is the end of the universe section. Um, I, I don't, Evan, would, did you want to have some time for questions there? Because um, I, you know, I know that was yeah. a lot of stuff. Yeah, let's, um, let's see. Hannah, you said you figured, figured it out. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, one of the questions that people have, does uh, list logic make sense? Yeah, it makes sense for me. Perfect. Cool. Awesome. Um, so there, there is one one thing I, I wanted to um, specify, you know, specifically mention before we moved on. Um, you know, we might touch on this in the canvassing section, but I, I think it's important enough to emphasize in the universe section because this is one of the major ways that Blue Vote works differently from Van, but it is significantly harder, if not impossible, to make minor ad hoc alterations to a universe based on more specific use cases. And what I mean by this is that on campaigns typically that I've worked on, we'll create like a statewide universe. And then um, the, you know, field organizers or regional field directors will take that, you know, initially saved universe and then edit their own copy based on whatever like precinct or town or zip code that they're specifically going to be canvassing in. Um, and, and sometimes they will just, you know, literally just narrow that to a precinct to start cutting turf in. But, you know, they also have the option to make other, you know, minor edits and tweaks to the universe, um, basically within the workflow of um, opening up a universe and like cutting turf. PDI or Blue Vote does not work that way. You cannot really... Um, you know, if you're a field organizer and cutting turf, you can't really go in and like edit it, be like, okay, well, I want the baseline universe, but only in this zip code. You have to 
you know, from the beginning, um, create and edit and save a universe the way that they all universes are saved in PDI. Um, and so again, it's like, you know, similar to Van, but just Van makes it like significantly easier to make those kind of like small, minor, like ad hoc alterations, like particularly kind of like narrow down to whatever area that you're going to be canvassing in. Um, and so that's, you know, as a, as a blue vote admin, um, that's just something you have to keep in mind when creating universes that typically you have to kind of um, create more of them ahead of time um, and, you know, centralize that process. If, if you have one person creating universes, like you might need to create one per like zip code or per precinct um, because just PDI doesn't make it as easy and intuitive for field organizers to then go make those minor changes because you have to go through this kind of whole process of creating and saving a universe to do it. Um, it you can't like just go in and open up a universe and like edit and save a copy of it. So um, I, I know that's a little bit more advanced, but I, I just wanted to um, emphasize that because it, again, it is something that will affect how both the admin and the field staff on a campaign interact with PDI. Awesome. And yeah, I'm seeing some other stuff in the chat. People like the, the math that gives a count at every step. Um, yeah, that is cool. Um, cool. All right. Well, I'm going to power on if there are any other questions right now. You know, if something does come to mind, throw it in the chat. Um, but to uh, in the interest of time, <laughs> as we approach the halfway mark, I will screen share once again. All right, so we're back in people search. Okay, well, let's go back to the home page. So next thing I want to talk about is, um, yeah, how you can track information in um, in PDI. So uh, we're going to go to the admin drop down here, and the surveys and data configuration is where we're going to start. So when we open this up, uh -oh, maybe I, oh, there it is. Okay, great. It gives us uh, a few tabs, and then on this first tab, it has a few different like sections here. So you got flags and surveys, volunteers, events, donors, connect, contact data sources, custom districts. And then in each one, there's like these, uh, you know, uh, this little menu here. Um, so the one we're going to focus on is flags and surveys. So um, here you can create multiple candidates or issues. Um, uh, so like if you are using PDI to do like issue organizing and like you have like a big rent control campaign and you have like a big um, immigration campaign, then you could you could have different like top level issues for that. Um, but the more immediate and everyday thing you're gonna wanna know about is flags here. So as it says uh, in the little information box here, flags are quote, recorded response information about an individual. So you can see that there are some built into our instance already. There's yard sign delivered, yes to yard sign. There's uh, very likely to vote. And in each case, there's, the flag is like a very short, um, you know, 10 character, eight character thing. Um, and <laughs> this is funny, household has USA flag. I hadn't seen that one before. Um, and then it, there's, there's a description and you can associate a flag with something. So. Um, so I'll show, so I'll show you how to add a new, add a new one. And just to, uh, you know, um, uh, for those of you who don't know Van, this is probably getting super annoying, but <laughs> for those of you who do know Van, um, the, uh, you know, equivalent here is that a flag would be the equivalent of, of an activist code or a survey response. So Van, you know, kind of has these two separate tools to track information. In, in PDI, it's all under the flags, uh, all done in the flag section. So, um, so yeah, let's say we need to add a new one. Uh, and we're going to, we're going to add a flag for, um, what are we going to do? Um, we've already got the yard sign thing. And then uh, let's do like needs a ride to the polls. So you can see there's a pretty hard character limit here. Polls ride. Perfect. Needs a ride to the polls. And you could associate it with something. We'll do that in a second here. You can also show advanced. Um, we're not going to worry about those. So we'll save that. So that's someone who 
you know, that's a flag that we can apply to someone who needs a ride to the polls. So we could just end there and we could just say, um, okay, we'll just, we'll just apply that flag for anyone. Um, and the, but like, you know, often you're going to be using that in a script. So you're going to ask, do you need a ride to the polls? So there would be, this would be the yes answer, but we also want to include a flag for the no answer. No ride does not need a ride to the polls. Okay, so now we've got flags for both of those. And um, the polls ride. Oh, sorry, there was already one existing. But anyway, we'll uh, we'll use we'll use those. So um, uh, so they they don't have an association though here, and what that means is it's not related to. Uh, it's just kind of floating out there. We could we could manually apply it, but it's not related to like a survey question. So that's uh, as you can guess is the um, question section. So now this would be the equivalent of a van survey question, as it's defined here. Questions are used in surveys and associated with the ID flags. So in this case, we're going to create a uh, survey question called "Ride to Polls." Do you, you need a ride? To the polls, and you can select a question type. Um, yeah, we'll just do like intent to vote. Oh no, that's not. We'll we're not going to do a question type. Um, and uh, then we're going to associate answers with this. So we've got response code. All right, where are we here? So I think, let's see here. I'm just gonna use other. Yeah, okay, right. So if you choose one of these uh, like sections, they're gonna pre-populate the answers. But if you use other, that's what you can use for anything that you don't want to pre-populate. So here we'll do uh, no ride. Oh, it looks like someone else is following along. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so I'll do, uh, Needs to write to the polls, and then you to add another response code, which is no ride. Does not need a ride to the polls. Okay, so here are here now we've created a question that ties those two flags together, and I'll save it. And now you can see it shows up here. Ride to the polls. The associated answer call, co codes are polls ride and no ride, um, and it's with the Renew US uh, campaign. So all right, so now we've got. We've got our answers, which are called flags. We've got the question that those are answers to, which is called questions. And then now we can do a survey, which is a script that ties, you know, multiple uh, questions together. So again, as it's defined here, surveys have scripts and questions that change based on provided answers. And when you do add new, um, you've got the option to create either a basic survey which um, you know is like static, it's like on a printed piece of paper, or a logical branch survey, which displays a different branch of the script depending on which information uh, the user inputs. So I'll start with the basic survey. Um, and uh, yeah, so then we can select a question, right to polls, we'll add that question. Um, and then we'll do, can we count on your support? Oh, wait, let me, let me start over. So first I'm going to ask, can we count on your support? And then I'm going to ask, do you need to write to the polls? So you can see the order is, that's the order now. It's checked as active. And then uh, I'll save survey. And now we've got, you know, a basic uh, script. So that's pretty straightforward. You can't add any text blocks or anything. Um, it's just like a list of survey questions. And what gets trickier is the you know, branch scripts. So I'll create a new one. So I'm choosing logical branch survey, Evan branch example. And uh, and here we can add these different segments and then we can relate them to each other in different ways. So, uh, you know, let's do a normal script. 
pi is voter name oh hi my name is name um with the new us okay so and then so this is a we're entering like a text block um i have to give it a name intro so now you see it's down here and when i choose the drop down it gives me like a little preview of it so next we're going to ask can we count on your support we'll just cut right to the chase right so now there's a second block down here can we count on your support and you can see there's these little boxes with the say next that's what block i'm sorry that's what branch uh you should go down you know the, the script will go down based on the response to this question so the first one's easy whether it's skipped or people actually use it and in fact let's not allow it to be skipped so we're just going to say you know you read off that and then you say can we count your support um so it goes to this next block and then let's say after we ask if we count their support, let's say we're going to ask if they need a ride to the polls. So now I've got a third block down here. So we're going to say, okay, first it goes, hi, is voter name home? And then next we're going to say, can we count on your support? And um, if they say, yes, strong support, then we want to ask them if they need a ride to the polls. Same thing for lean, lean support. If they're undecided, we're just going to end the survey. Because, like, say it's GOTV, we're not going to bother with, like, I mean, this would be a bad script. You should still do persuasion. Um, uh, but anyone who's a strong supporter or a lean supporter, it's going to take them to the ride to the polls question. And after we've asked someone if they need a ride to the polls, whether they say yes or they say no, we're going to end the survey. Um, and anyone who's undecided, lean opposed or strong opposed, we're going to end the survey. So this is a pretty basic script. And the, um, yeah, so, but it, you know, it's a branch script and it has some of this like logic here, which is again, sim similar to Van. One cool thing that this, do this does support that Van does not support is all this formatting that you can use for the text blocks, especially inserting hyperlinks. Van does not support links in their um, minivan scripts. So this is a you know, little minor, Seems like a minor thing, but it makes it a lot easier when you have like a script where you're asking the cam the canvasser like needs to pull up a um, like they need to look up where someone's polling location is or something. You could just put a link to that lookup form here, which is not available in uh, in Van, and you could do different formatting things, which is cool. So let's save the survey. Okay, so now we've got this script built, and now we can use this script in any sort of uh, voter contact that's viewed on a screen. We cannot use this for any sort of uh, printed list of any kind because it's a branch script. Obviously, um, on a paper list, there's no way to do this branching. You have to use a basic script for any sort of printed list. But this is, we've got a, a basic script that's ready to go and we've got a branch script that's ready to go. Um, so I'll pause for questions and then I'm gonna hand things over to Harry to sh show how to use one of these scripts in a phone bank. But uh, I saw there's some chatter in the chat. Oh, Hannah, Hannah's, Hannah's copying me. Cool. Cool. Um, all right. This is, sorry, I know there's a lot here. Were, were there any questions on the flags, questions, surveys? Cool. Okay, sounds good. I'll kick it over to Harry. Oh wait, sorry, was there one? Oh, when would we use a basic script? Yeah, Sam, great question. So um, a basic script would be used for any time you're doing like a paper list. So if you've got a volunteer who wants to call off a list of people, it's a like physical list of people, or you've got a person who wants to knock doors off a physical list of people, you need to use a basic script for any sort of like phone banking on a computer or on um, uh, or canvassing on a phone. That's uh, that's when you'd use a branch script. Cool. Okay. Um, 
So without further ado, we're going to be um, diving into some more of the specific tools that PDI offers, starting off with phone banking. Um, so does everybody see my screen OK? Yes. Yep. OK, cool. So um, luckily, making um, phone banks is actually pretty intuitive. Um, there aren't that many like weird clerks, quirks. Um, Though it does, you know, work a little bit differently than how it's done in Vote Builder. Um, so basically, the way that you start. Um, hey, Gary, before you before you dive into that, um, there's a question on, on flags that I don't actually know the answer to. Oh, sure. Um, uh, it, my understanding is that it's visible to everyone on that instance. Right? Uh, hold on, sorry, I'm I'm trying to find. Um, the chat. There we go. Um, user specific. Oh, um, I believe um, it should be accessible to everybody. Um, I, I there might be like advanced options to like limit access, but I'm pretty sure everybody who is like in that account has access to it. Um, they can, you know, they can see it and use it. They might not be able to edit it, but like. Um, you know, canvassers can use that in um, surveys that they're using and phone bankers and all that. So as long as all the accounts are on the same thing, they, they should have like access to it. Does that answer your question? Yeah, and sorry, I found this thing. If you click the lock button, you can require authorization for a flag. I think, I don't know exactly what that does, but I think that means that it's only visible to you. Cool, okay. Um, so yeah, um, to do phone banking, um, it starts off at this little outreach tab at the top here. Um, hold on, I gotta move the uh, Zoom bars out of the way. Um, but yeah, basically all of the um, kind of voter outreach activity lives here under the outreach tab. Um, and you'll see here, there's a lot of different options here. You've got phones, field, email, SMS. Um, we're not really going to worry about these. Um, we're going to be going into field canvassing later, but um, these other ones are more kind of advanced in the phone and canvassing and um, field canvassing as where you're going to be doing the, you know, the bulk of your use of PDI. So um, to start phone banking, um, unsurprisingly, you go to phone canvassing and just click on online phone bank. Um, I'm not 100% sure what click to dial is, but I've primarily used the online phone bank. And, um, you know, very similar to how it works in NGP Van, this isn't voice over IP in that you're not using your laptop through the Blue Vote website to directly make calls. It will provide you with a dashboard to um, organize your conversations and interactions with voters using your own phone. So it'll have, you know, the script and the survey responses that you'll enter in and all that other good stuff along with the phone number to call, but um, you have to be using your phone to do it. Um, and so the other kind of main um, difference between um, Van and Blue Votes and how they do it is that um, it's a two-step process to create a phone bank and start making calls. Um, you make the phone bank project itself, um, but then you have to make an active phone bank link as well that actually like enables it to have a URL or a like login option to like go in and start making calls. Um, and you'll see here that there are two different you know buttons for each of them. So. Um, you can create multiple different kinds of links for the same phone bank project. Um, I don't know off the top of my head why you would maybe want to do that, but perhaps, um, you know, th there's a different, like, I don't know, date or time, like, window that you want to make calls in and you have to, like, switch to a different one without, like, completely dropping and remaking the phone bank. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but, you know, th th this is just another example of how um, Blue Votes in general is a lot more modular than uh, NGP Van is. Um, so it, it does allow you to do more in depth things, but um, you know, it is a little bit 
somewhat confusing why you have to create a link after creating your phone bank. It doesn't just do it all in the same step. So um, ours is not to wonder why. Um, to get started here, you know, um, basically the main options are very intuitive here. You give it a name, Harry's phone bank um and you'll go in and select the universe that you want so um i believe what, what did you call yours evan um i know you created a script so where i'm just going to do yeah. harry dems here which is the one that i made before um you don't have to really worry about the universe type you can like specify if it's going to be like voters versus that people database um, if you want to like, I think narrow, if you're using a universe that includes both, but since we just, you know, want to be as broad as possible, um, I'm not going to worry about this here. Um, but I am going to select a survey and, um, Evan, which of these was the one that you just made? Um, the, uh, branched example. Demo branch. Okay, great. No, no, no. Um, branch example. Is that not uh, there? I don't see it. Um, Demo branch is fine. It's not the one I just made, but it'll work. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess I might have I might have jumped into this too fast. Sometimes it takes a minute for things to like load and propagate. Um, but um, you can use the same scripts in a phone bank as you do in a door canvassing script. Um, you can also create, specific, you know, separate scripts if you have something that you know you want people to say or do differently on the phone versus the doors but um if you're working you know with a more traditional simple like candidate support script that could be used in either instance you do have the ability to just reuse your survey scripts um and here again like these this is more advanced stuff that you don't really need to worry about i don't really ever select templates when doing phone banks um but you know, the last thing here that it offers you is the end date of a phone bank. Um, it defaults to a month in advance. So um, we're just gonna leave it here. Um, this is just worth keeping in mind. Um, if your phone banks suddenly and explicably stop working, um, first thing you should do is check the expiration date because it, that's typically what's causing the issue in my experience. Um, but also um, there are some advanced features here that, um, you may or may not take advantage of um, probably the ones that are most relevant um, to what you'll be doing is the recently called filter. Um, this is a pretty, I think, handy tool um, or, or feature of this tool that you can basically go in and without, you know, explicitly including this as part of your universe, you can tell the phone bank to exclude people who have been called recently. So within the last two, three, however many weeks, um, just to prevent overcalling and annoying voters. Um, and I, I don't, I, this might've changed recently. I don't think Van lets you do this. Um, that's something that you have to like explicitly um, factor into your universe when you're creating it to like exclude anybody called within two weeks. Um, which, you know, you can do that within PDI as well, but um, just to make your life easier, um, you can, you know, if you're doing phone banking, you can, you can start as like your base universe, and then it will give you that ability to automatically exclude those people that you have already recently called. Um, and similarly, like the exclude filter, like you can just cut out different universes of people that you don't want being called, like maybe you have just a specific walk universe compared to your phone universe and you don't want people being called who have been knocked um, or for whatever reason. I, I don't, again, it's, it's kind of up to you and, and what you would want to like use to kind of narrow in and craft your like calling universe. Um, the rest of these are typically um, have default values like acquisition type is just the like contact type that your reporting will um, display when like pulling up counts of like activity through this phone bank. So you should probably just leave it as like an online phone bank, though, you know, you could click mobile canvassing and all this activity will show up the same way as door canvassing through the app. Um, so I don't know why it offers that, but if you ever want to do that, um, you have the option to. Um, you also, you know, can factor in event recruitment and RSVP stuff, though I, I haven't really used as much of that. So I'm gonna kind of skim over that. Um, 
But the last thing here is um, there are secondary surveys and secondary subuniverses that you can do in phone banks. Um, and, and this is like a maybe more advanced than um, what folks need to know, but this is something that also door canvassing can do as well. Um, you can create a second sub universe of people if you want them to use a different script um, or survey script. Um, so maybe there are Spanish language um, pe people that you want to have a Spanish script show up for, um, and you're able to create a universe of these Spanish speaking individuals. Um, what this does is that even if the like broader main universe includes these Spanish speaking individuals, as long as you have them loaded as a um, sub universe here, and I'm just going to do Evan test. Um, any individual in that sub universe, um, when the phone bank gets to them, it will display that secondary survey rather than the main one that you loaded up here. Um, and again, I, I haven't really used this too much in the in the um, stuff I've been doing, but it's you know kind of a nifty way to better tailor your scripts um, to the specific you know people that you're talking to if you want to be able to include that additional information um, or different information. Um, and so the last thing that is relevant here when creating a phone bank is set geographical filter. Um, this is just another kind of built in way for phone banking to kind of custom and narrow down the specific people that you want to um, be calling. Like if you're you know, a field organizer who's making calls, you wanna only be calling into a certain city or a certain county, um, this is where you would be able to do it. So I, I know in the create a universe section, I did say that um, PDI doesn't really let the end user, the field organizer, make kind of like small alterations and tweaks. Um, that I, I probably um, spoke more broadly than I meant to. In phone banking, you do have some options, like I, I showed here, um, to narrow down universes, but you're still not really able to like expand or edit the parameters that went into the universe without explicitly creating and saving an entirely separate universe. So. Um, I'm just going to run through that here. Um, this will show you the basically list of geographical fields that you can narrow on. Um, you know, again, there's a lot of options here. You're probably going to be working with, you know, zip code or precinct for the most part. Um, and so what this does is this, it'll just narrow down to whatever um, precincts that you included here um, or, you know, zip codes maybe. Um, and so then anybody in either one of these zip codes will be included. Um, I am going to try and, um, yeah, that's kind of annoying. You can't really like unselect things that you click, but I'm gonna go out for just a second because the, um, in addition to like zip code geography, oh, that's annoying and save them all. Um, you can also, um, narrow in on turf that have been cut for door knocking, for instance, and you do that here in carved areas. Um, and so this is maybe useful if, um, you know, there's a heat advisory or something. And so you, you typically are running a paid, you know, maybe you're running a paid canvassing program, but for whatever reason, your people aren't able to knock, but you do want them to be basically doing voter outreach within the like turfs that were assigned to them. Um, this is how you would be able to pivot from doing door canvassing to doing phone canvassing um, of specific turfs. Um, you, you know, and van, it is slightly different because turfs are treated themselves as like lists and universes. So you would be doing that in that step where you select the universe. Um, it's just a slightly different like workflow within Blue Vote that you would take the main, you know, statewide universe or whatever, and then find whatever turf that you're interested in, um, and then add it to the universe. So um, this is, I don't know if this is really going to include anybody, but um, I am going to save this now. Oh, universe type is required. Okay. so. I uh, was wrong there. You do have to select a uh, voter, but um, once you do that, it will be saved. Oh no. Um, I'm gonna cancel that because this is a giant universe. I don't want to um, 
charge us thousands of dollars. So th <laughs> this is something that's not, you know, on a real um, uh, PDI committee, it won't, you know, it, if you've paid for a committee and have like access to real voters, it'll just let you do the phone bank here. So um, I am going to skip that. Oh, it does look like there is a phone bank here already. So um, basically, the, um, once you save it, it'll show up here in um, phone bank projects. Um, there's already one here. So I'm going to be able to um, walk through creating the phone bank link. Because right now, this has you know the universes of people and all that, and you can go in and make edits to it, but um, you cannot you know make calls here yet. Um, in order to make calls, you have to create the link first, which you know again it's uh, an extra step. It's just part of how PDI structures the workflow. Um, all you do is you go, you create a link, you name the link, so Harry's test link and then select whatever phone bank you want to use. Um, I'm using the one that was already created here. Um, but you know, I, if I was making my own phone bank, I would use the one that I just did. Um, and again, it, you can see here it has a separate expiration date. Um, and this is where you actually um, determine the you, you know more administrative details of like who is allowed to make calls. So you can require a password. Um, I'm just going to do test. Um, you can also do things like um, enable callers to register um, and also make people log in. Um, so this is something my the the peop, the blue votes thing I've worked on it looks a little bit different, but um, I think they might have changed. Basically, what these do is this like determines who's allowed to log into a phone bank. Um, like they might need to have a volunteer account created already, um, which is what I believe that that's what this does. Um, otherwise, you can make it you know open to anybody who has a URL can go in and make calls, or or they can like create an account um, once they click the URL. Um, and so you know you can also set hours of operation. Um, you know if you want people only calling within a certain um, you know span of time, like. Uh, you know, 4 p.m. through, uh, I don't know, 7 p.m., whatever, um, you, know, you know, whatever calling time is. Um, and then, you know, you can create multiple windows of it as well. Um, and then finally, once you are done with all of this stuff and happy, you create your link. Um, okay. I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, so <laughs> Sometimes it makes you add some of these details. Um, so start time five to nine, select. Now I'm gonna create a link, voila. Um, so it um, huh, interestingly created two phone banks in addition to the one that I did. No, nah, uh, that was me, sorry. Oh, 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 okay, <laughs> all good. Um, so you can see here, um, if you open up the um, link name here, this is where you actually get the URL to make calls. Um, and you can see here, I did not allow people to self-register the way that this one does. Um, so enable callers to self-register, that was the panel I was looking for. So yes, what this means is that if that is selected, anybody who has this link, even if they don't have a PDI account, can um, create a PDI account to then start making calls. Otherwise, they'll be prompted um, for their login that all of you used here before. So typically, um, you know, I, I think you're probably going to want to have uh, it be limited to people that you're like vetting and approving, but maybe on a larger one where you're not worried about the URL getting you know lost. Um, you can allow people to self-register and then, you know, set up the accounts to then start making calls. But um, otherwise, um, once you log in, it's going to take you to the, um, you know, login page that you did before. Um, login page is out of operation. Ha -ha. Um, so I'm going to save that now and then go back and copy it then um, 
Uh, oh, it might be a time zone thing. Let's just do AM and see if that works. Um, or it might take a minute to kick in, right? Yeah. Um, if this doesn't work, I'm just going to go into the other one. Oh, there we go. Um, so you're going to uh, log in. Um, hmm. Is it? All right. Well, I'm going to unscreen share for a second to try and. Is that your canvasser login? Oh, 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 right. That's right. Okay. Um, yes. Canvasser profiles and admin profiles are separate. That um, is something that I skipped over. Did you make a uh, phone banking profile for me? No. Sorry. Okay. I can, okay. So yeah, I, I mean, this is this is a good like lesson anyway because it's it's again something that is much different than Van and that like I have an admin profile. That's what I've been doing all of the stuff with. But to do either door canvassing through the mobile app or phone banking, you actually have to specifically have a volunteer profile as well, um, which does have a separate login information um, system here. So actually, I am going to use this other one that we made that does let you um, self-register. Um, so I'm going to register Harry Baker. Um, da, 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 da. Let's see if I can. Yeah. Um, it's making me do all of this stuff. And uh, I think it sends you an invite now, right? Or no? Yeah, that might have been it. Um, so apologies for this. I, I uh, totally blanked that I didn't have one of those made already. So let me get that set up. Um, huh. Um, so actually, it'll probably be quicker to just go through and create my own volunteer account first. Um, sorry if I'm cutting into what you were going to do, Evan, but to create volunteer accounts, um, you go to data entry, volunteer management, um, and you'll see, oh, there is one here for me that um, I guess was just created. Maybe there's no password. Oh, well, that's not it. Um, and um, the way that you like edit um, volunteer profiles is you click on the thing here. I am trying to find my password, but um, let's just edit that as test and then I save changes. Um, it does not like that for some reason. Um, How about I just should I just take out take over? Yeah. Do you have a, Do you have an account? Could you could you log into one of those um, phone banks? Yeah. Let me see, let me just double check. But um, did, did you want to? You were going to cover reporting quick, right? And then I'll do doors. Yeah. Out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I could I can do reporting while you get that. Um, so. Um, I am going to briefly cover reporting. Um, I, I say briefly because. I do not think their reporting tools are very good. And I, I mean, worse than Vans are even. Um, so I have typically tried to do my own reporting based off of like full exports of contact data, but um, just to get like top lines of activity, um, it's not super um, annoying to do. It's just that their, their reporting tools are not really equipped to do like larger campaigns or campaigns that have multiple scripts and different mobile projects and a lot of other different things. So when you go to the canvassing report manager, um, there are a lot of different drop downs here. Um, and in order to get the specifics that you want to report on, um, you kind of have to know the uh, like nuances of what to pick here. So the way that you will basically get um, all reports across like all activity um, 
well, I guess stepping back a little bit, the, the way that it like normally works is that you click a mobile project and, um, you know, then process counts here. There, there's not going to be anything because we don't have any like valid phone banking activity, but, or even door canvassing activity. But um, if you were to run this, this would show you um, within the mobile canvassing project, Evan test, these are all of the counts that are spit out. Um, however, the way that PDI normally works is that you will have multiple different mobile projects. And in order to get all of them, um, you have to run your report by not selecting a specific mobile project or survey script. Instead, you go to row options and then click on mobile projects here and then run counts that way. Um, and that will give you all of the breakdowns of counts, including you know, contact attempts, households, um, and then in addition to the different flag and survey response counts that you um, included in whatever like you know, activity that you've done here. Um, so I, again, like I, um, there's not as much we can do here without like actual valid data, but if there was activity, um, you would see a breakdown of all canvassers and how many, you know, doors they knocked on, people they talked to, like responses they got, um, in addition to the total top line summing it up here. So I, I say, you know, I, I don't really like the reporting tool. It's because, again, it's really kind of unclear if you want to do more granular breakdowns based on, um, you know, mobile project or like organized or assignments, um, because that's another thing that PDI does. You, you'll see here that there's canvasser information as well as organizer. Um, this is basically just like a hierarchy that you're able to add to volunteer profiles. Um, which actually I'll just show here, um, you'll see that there's an optional organizer um, column um, that basically is like the equivalent of a regional field director. So I'm gonna click Evan is an organizer and then um, I'm gonna need to save that. Hopefully it'll let me do that. Nope, I don't think I have the option to save, um, but if I did and Evan was an organizer, um, I would be able to assign my own profile to Evan's organizer profile here. And then that doesn't really um, do so much. It, it, that doesn't really, isn't really as relevant in the, like the uh, blue vote administration side, but it does make reporting easier because then if I want to get counts of just, you know, Evan's organizers, I can run a count based on um, you know, only profiles that have been assigned to Evan. Um, if I want to just pull up, okay, how is Evan's team doing? How many doors did they knock? Um, the, the reason this, hey, Harry. There, yep. Oh, I'm sorry, just a time check. Okay. Uh -huh. So yeah, I'm, I'm finishing up here. Basically it's, it's um, not as easy to get like organized top lines across multiple organizers because it spits out like a row you know, several rows of stuff that isn't like really portable to a spreadsheet and doesn't give you like sums in the way that uh, most campaigns and field directors I've worked with once the data presented. So um, were you able to log into the phone bank, Evan? I was, yes. So right. I will, thank you, Harry. Um, and I'll just burn through doors and then we'll take, you know, you know if we have time for questions at the end, uh, we'll, we'll get to that. So, um, okay, here's the phone bank. Here's what the phone bank interface looks like. Pretty self-explanatory. Phone number up here. You use your you use your own phone to dial that phone number, and then you enter the results here. If you can't reach them, you know you select these options here. Um, if you did talk to them, you click you you give the option or the result for the first question. You click next. Result for the next question, so on and so forth, and then you can uh, save data slash next call, and it brings up the next person. Um, so next, let's get back to the admin side. Um, okay, so that's how to call voters using PDI. Um, the way to knock on people's doors using the tool is under outreach, you go to field canvassing instead of phone canvassing. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an edit slash print turf. So that brings you to um, a map, a uh, turf cutting map. Um, and to kind of get uh, your 
to select people to show up on this map, you choose a universe. Um, we'll use, uh, I had one that was in East Providence, so I'll just do that here. So when you select your universe, this is, this is the universe that you're cutting your turfs based on. And I'll come back to what that, why that's important in a second. Um, so uh, these little dots are households, groups of households. And, you know, the yellow ones are bigger and the green ones are smaller. And, you know, the idea is you could cut turf at this level. You could say, okay, there's, you know, 10, 6, 3. So I could cut turf by clicking this cut turf button. And then I select those people. And then that's a good turf. I mean, that's pretty big though. So instead I'm gonna zoom in further. And once you get in small enough, it, it, when it has just one um, household or person, it'll break out from the little bubble and it will, will be a one that's not highlighted at all, which is kind of annoying, but um, you know, so generally you're gonna cut at something, a level like this, where there's, there's groupings, but they're not um, they're not big groupings that have you know 50 and 100 people in them. So uh, so yeah, the um, let's see the count of how many total people are on the list is up here in the top right. And then the way that you actually cut the turf is you zoom in to you know the level that you want to, click the cut turf button, and then you draw these little polygons around to select a group of people. Once you've closed the um, shape, then uh, you have to give it a name. So I don't know, Harry, what your practice is, but um, I'm going to use area name as group name. <laughs> yeah, um, that's, that's fine. Um, yeah, typically, I mean, especially on a bigger one, you would want to have it organized by like the region or, you know, the region the field director who's doing the stuff, but um, that all is optional. Like you can totally do it as the name of the turf. Perfect, perfect. So I'll just do this Evan test. Um, oh, I, I already have one named that, so I'll call it Evan test one, maybe. Yeah, there we go. Um, so as you can see, turf cube for processing, please wait two minutes before trying to access it. So uh, there are certain things that the system just takes a little bit of time um, to process, and this is one of them. So if I want to, so I'm going to cut my next turf. So I use cut turf. There's also these other buttons here. So if you wanted to, um, uh, you know, delete all the turfs, or if you wanted to save them, there is an auto cut button here. I've never used it. Um, oh. Don't use it. Never do it. <laughs> never do it. Um, and you know, we're cutting turf in the same kind of turf cutting practices for those of you who are in. Uh, the van training applies, so like you don't want to cross large bodies of water, or um, you you also don't want to cross these major highways, and you want to make sure that all the roads connect up so people can actually walk from one side to the other. You know those all those turf cutting practices that you probably know from having knocked doors yourself. So um, okay, so we've got a couple turfs here. Um, and I'm going to go scroll down here and I'm going to go Evan, to... Evan, can I, can I um, cut in real quick? Uh, yeah, so the, the one um, last thing I, I think it's worth mentioning is that um, that little pin icon on the leftmost box there that you were hovering over, that will switch the display from those like summed up like bubbles to the actual oh. individual pins of households. So um, it does, it is much more computationally intensive. So like, especially with a bigger universe, it will kind of lag up and freeze your display a little bit. Um, but for smaller ones, you can kind of select it if you want to be more precise and granular with cutting turf. Um, though I, I think typically most people use those bubbles because it does effectively give you the um, bird's eye view of where the households are and what the counts are. That's awesome. I didn't realize that's what it did. And it looks like it only does it for the actual turf regions that have been selected. Um, so. Okay, cool. So we've got a couple turfs cut. Now we're going to proceed to assign areas page. And here we have this blank screen. <laughs> You've got to choose an assignment method. So there are a number of different options. Um, this assign turf from list is what I'm going to demonstrate here. And then you have to choose a um, canvassing project. So um, 
and Harry, jump in. I know this is this is your uh, your area of expertise. So a canvassing project is um, <clears throat> a universe that you associate with um, the turfs that you have just cut, and, which is confusing because um, you use the universe to cut the turfs, but PDI requires you to associate a, a, a universe with the turfs. And it can it it can be the same as the one that you cut the turf space on, or it could be different. Am I saying this correctly, Harry? Yeah. So the the way um, I would think of it is that the universe that's loaded into the mobile project is the universe of people that will appear in your phone when you're using the mobile canvassing tool. It is not necessarily the same as the universe of people that was used to cut the turf. Um, this is another example of uh, Blue Vote being more modular than Van. Uh, like in Van, you create a universe, you cut the universe, um, the turf is loaded into the um, the app and like one kind of like streamlined chain. Um, PDI, it's not necessarily the same. Um, like Evan said, effectively you will mostly be using the same universes to cut turf than that you will use to load into mobile projects. Um, but because turfs are like the geographical boundaries, not the specific people that were included in the turf, um, they are slightly different. So those turfs are the cut boundaries and then whoever in the mobile project universe falls into those boundaries is who will actually show up in the turfs when you're actually doing the canvassing. So it, it, you know, it, it's a little bit of an extra step and it takes a little bit of getting used to to get your you know, mind wrapped around it, but um, it is something that you will get used to. Cool, so here's, so I've got these two projects from before. I'm gonna create a new, pro, uh, new one just to demonstrate. Um, I'm gonna call it 12.2 demo. And it's a canvassing project rather than a lookup project. I have to select the saved universe. So East Providence test is what I cut the universe based on. It's also what I'm going to uh, use as the as the um, universe for the project. And then the base survey, I'm going to use uh, demo branch. And you got a start date, end date. There's also these additional op uh, options if you wanted like multiple surveys. Won't go into that. So I'll click save. And now after a few moments, let's take a several several minutes, so hopefully it moves quickly. Assign turf from list. I'm going to refresh my page. Yep, there it is. Okay, so now here we have the assignment interface. So <clears throat> it gives you a list of all the turfs that we've cut. We've got, you know, all the ones that I cut just now um the ones that harry's cut it looks like mgd has been cutting <laughs> as well um and you can assign up to two canvassers to each one so we'll do evan test one um so you from the drop down you select a canvasser again these canvassers are um the people that you've created in the um volunteer management page um so um oh it looks like it did save me as an organizer uh so you know you add a new volunteer here and then you know if you've um entered an email address and a mobile app password for them then they'll show up as an option uh on the assigning turf page it looks like I'm the only person who has who meets those criteria of having a mobile app password and an email address. Um, so I'm the only person who shows up as a canvasser. I don't think Harry yet. It doesn't look like Harry or Melanie. So I'm going to assign myself this turf, uh, Evan Test One turf. And then I'm going to click move to pending assignments. And then that now it shows up down here. Um, and uh, yeah, and so now we'll switch to, so now you've done you have to save. You have to save, save changes and update the devices. You oh, thank you. That blue button. Awesome, so now it moves to active. Thank you, Harry. Um, cool, so, so now like that turf has been assigned. So now I'm gonna switch over to 
how to use the app to actually knock this term. So um, the app is uh, called PDI Mobile Connect. I'll add a um, slide here. Um, is what you should look for on your app store. And um, once you've downloaded it, this will be the screen that you see, the login. And again, your um, Canvasser account is separate from your admin account. So the password that you use to log in to the web interface is not the same as the password that you use to log in to the, the web app. And you, and in fact, you need to, you need a user account for the web interface and you need a Canvas for user account. Um, just to reiterate what Harry was talking about. Um, so once you've logged in, um, you, uh, you have a screen of the TERPs that you've been assigned. So here I, I have two assignments, TERP 1 and TERP 2. Um, once you click on one of them, you get uh, the option to look at it in, by street view, map view, or people view. Um, street view is the best for battery usage. It's just a list of all the streets that have uh, a household on them that you're, you know, that's uh, on your list. Um, and you can kind of click, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm walking down Apollo Road, so I'll open up Apollo Road and see the addresses that I'm supposed to knock and enter the data. Uh, people view is a list of all the people on your um, list. It's not recommended because this won't be a very common way you'll want to interact with a list because you need to know what addresses to knock on, not necessarily what who those people are. Um, and then finally, there's map view, which is recommended if battery isn't a concern because it gives you a, kind of a, a Google Maps type view of how the houses are um, uh, distributed. Um, regardless of what view you use, once you click on a household, a house icon, um, it brings up a list of all the individuals at that house who are on your list. Um, you've got your uh, the not home button. So if you knock on the door and no one answers, you just click the big orange button. The other options by household button, which brings up this little um, scrolling menu of not home, moved, refused, gated, or deceased. Um, and then uh, the begin survey button, which is if you're actually if you actually talk to someone. Oh, sorry, there's more info as well, which is where you can add a comment or update their phone number. Um, and then the, the begin survey button, which uh, opens up the survey that's associated with this with this term. So you uh, enter a result for each question that's a part of the survey, click next, and then at the end, you've completed the survey, you finish with this house and you move to the next location. Or if you talk to multiple people at the same household, you click Can canvas more people here. And once you've entered that information, it turns the uh, household uh, a different color, red in this case. Um, and yeah, the only other thing on the app to talk about uh, is um, the settings, which you can access with the three dots in the top right there. Um, it gives you these list options um, that you can do, you know, different things you can do with it, including logging out uh, of, of the app. So that's pretty straightforward. It's, it's user friendly. Oops. Um, and the final thing I'll talk about with door canvassing is approving mobile data. So I'll share my screen again. Sorry. Um, okay, so you've had some canvassers who knocked a bunch of doors. Um, there's one final step that you have to do, which is approve their data. So you go to field canvassing, approve mobile data, and then um, you have to choose a view. We'll choose show data pending approval. So here's some data that I entered yesterday. Um, and it gives you like an overall summary of how many doors did they knock, you know, what percentage of their um, contacts were IDs. Um, did it pass the geographical check, which means um, was their phone physically in the turf <laughs> that they were knocking? And timing check, which is did was there a reasonable amount of time between the different um, results that they entered? And in this case, I wasn't in the turf for either of these, but on the first one, obviously there's just one piece of data entered. So it was realistic to it met that timing check. And uh, on the other one, I entered three results 
it rapid fire back to back to back. So it didn't meet the timing check. Um, you can approve all of these by hand or with approved select assignments, or you can take advantage of these geo and time checks and just click approve all canvasser assignments that pass the geographical check and the timing check um, and just uh, save yourself that one step of sorting through and figuring out which ones are real and which ones are not. So once you've approved the data, it'll, those flags will be like applied to the voters and uh, yeah, you're good to go. So I know that was a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, we do have five minutes. Could I uh, to answer any questions, Harry? Any any other? Anything yeah, else yeah. I, I, the, the, just one thing I wanted to um, mention about the relationship between turf universes canvassing and mobile projects is that um, you're only able to do a single pass within an individual mobile project. If you were to try and like load, you know, pull up um, that same turf in the same project. Um, it would show like everybody has already been attempted or canvassed or whatever. However, even if you use the same turf loaded in a new mobile project, um, it will show as you know a fresh pass as people not having been attempted again. So this is something that it's a little bit more annoying compared to Van, where you can just in a, for a given turf just refresh or regenerate the list number and load it again, and it'll be a new pass. Um, you, you do explicitly have to create a new mobile project for that to work um, the same way. Awesome. Um, All right, I see Monty. Monty, you got a question? Yeah, I was uh, wondering about the mobile timing check. Uh -huh. That um, seems related to the work I was doing. Um, you know, last year when I was uh, on minivan, mm -hmm. uh, kind of monitoring performance and things like that. Um, so there's definitely situations that arise when uh, something will get flagged for that, when um, that, that are more common. So in those situations, is it just then, um, does that just kind of, is that tool just to kind of separate out so that it's less of a challenge? And are there any other, um, kind of systems in place that could detect like other uh, uh, discrepancies or irregu irregularities? Sure, yeah. So I think the timing check, I mean, the way I would use it is, you know, if you already are suspicious of this, um, this data, like the timing check is a good gut check saying, oh yeah, they entered a bunch of data really fast. Um, but there are, there are, legitimate reasons that someone entered like five results all back to back. Like sometimes I do that, like I knock five doors and then I enter all the data. Um, so I would just use it as one tool. I mean, the other tools, which are more realistically when I audit turf or audit uh, canvas results, I'm looking more at these percentages um, where it's like, okay, this person said that they contacted literally every person on the list. That is not, that cannot be real. Like a hundred percent contact rate on a list of 40, like that seems fake. Um, and so that's that's really the, the first thing that I look at. The geographical check, that's also helpful. If they physically weren't in the turf, then like that's a problem. And then the timing check, I don't know, is like more of a secondary. If you select the name um, of like that row, it'll actually pull up the um, line by line for each like contact in it with the timestamp. I Maybe the timestamp's not included, but um, oh yes, it is. So yeah, if you want to do you know more in depth investigation, you can actually look through the time at which each response was entered to then you know find out any funny business. You know if they enter fifty all within the you know minute, then something is going on. Um, but if it does look more legitimate that you know it's a, a twenty or thirty seconds between each household, that could be some you know evidence that things are legitimate. Hey, there are some legitimate irregularities like that. Though. <laughs> I, ju I just did that uh, the last GOTV here in Virginia. Um, I was piggybacking with another individual because she was a paper person. Um, uh -huh. And so I knocked a big chunk of the doors on minivan. And then yep. when I got hold of her sheets, I just entered it in minivan. So 
we didn't have to go back to the uh, staging location to to return pieces of paper. Yes, yes, I've done the same thing. No, that's that's a great point. Um, cool. Okay, one minute left. I can hang out for a minute or two more. But um, what other questions do people have? Do people feel like they've gotten their feet wet with PDI and they're ready to kind of play around with it and learn more, or do they feel overwhelmed? What's what's the uh, throw in the chat? You know, go off you whatever you're whatever you're comfortable with. Let's get in this kiddie pool. Oh yeah. <laughs> Let's get in the yeah, it's like a sandbox pool combination. Any other any other feedback? Universe builder, Sam likes it, cool. Both awesome. Overwhelmed and ready to play around. Good, good. Um okay. Thank you for the kind kind words. Um I will continue to be available in the um CM training Slack if you're in there. Um, I will also put my email address and Harry's email address in the uh, chat. Um, and, you know, we're, uh, we're glad to help, you know, yeah, if you have questions, like, we, you know, we're always glad to give advice and that sort of thing. Answer, answer easy questions. And if you need like a longer term, like, hey, I'm working on this campaign and we're using <laughs> PDI and we need a training, we also do that. Um, you know, if there's like a, you know, paid opportunity like that, we're, we're open for that too. Or, but if it's just like questions, you know, that come up over email, you know, we're glad to, glad to do that for free. So, um, yeah, that is all I have. Jen, Harry, anything else you wanted to add? I just want to say thank you so much to both of you. Thank you for everyone who is here and watching. Um, please, if you have any questions, definitely see the information section that is on this video. Again, if you know anyone that might be interested in the campaign manager training program, this is definitely some of the stuff we do. And keep an eye out on all things Renew because we have a pretty heavy schedule of classes coming up for the rest of this month and actually a lot hitting the waves in January. So Harry and Evan, thank you so much. And everyone in attendance, have a wonderful day and a beautiful weekend. Take care, everyone. Bye.